Hi, I'm Shannon Heaton, and this is the 2023 edition of the Tune of the Month, where I take a different tune and break it down phrase by phrase for easy learning. Irish music is a social practice. It's great to learn tunes from somebody else. So here I am, ready to teach you this month's tune. Okay, Pigeon on the Gate, let's go. There are a lot of versions of this E minor reel, and here's one version. Flute players, uh, I'm going to have a lot of E going on in this E minor reel, as you might expect. And on my long E's, a lot of times I'm going to roll. My roll rhythmic event is E, cut, tap. Play the E, vent with the G finger, tap with the D, tap the D hole with this finger. Now, some prefer to vent or cut with this finger, your F sharp finger, which is a lovely sound as well. E, vent, tap, or E, cut, tap. And some even, on some flutes, it accommodates well uh, to lift this finger, I believe. E, vent, tap. Not all flutes work to do that. If you are not satisfied with the sound of your E-roll, experiment with a different uh, way to do it, and you might find something that works better for you or that sounds better to you. Also, in my E-roll, please note, my pinky, my bottom pinky, is light and loose. It is not planted on the instrument. I'm not going da-da-da with my pinky down. I think if I did that, it would really cause discomfort here, here. It would kind of jam me up, and I wouldn't get the right um, momentum for the bottom part of the roll. Also, if you have keys and you're planting this here, for the bottom part, you're going to get a D-sharp, which is the wrong sonority, I think, for this roll. So let's keep the bottom pinky light and loose in the air for the e-roll event anyway that's a suggestion see how that works for you here is the lovely pigeon on the gate once around and then i'll break it down phrase by phrase for easy learning one two Birds like that one. Uh, so if you on the replay notice that I'm breathing in different places on the first A part versus the second B part, that was intentional. Some very, very simple breathing ideas, all of which work, and um, then learn some more. Figure out even more places that you could possibly breathe and use all of those breathing places. Um, uh, uh, mix and match them. I think that's a great way to start to employ some melodic variation, some phrasing variation, and also to ensure that you don't run out of breath in an inopportune time. Here's the tune, phrase by phrase. I'll play a phrase and give you just enough time to sing it back. That's what I recommend. Learn how the tune goes. Learn it in your ear. Learn it in your heart before you try it on your instruments. All right, so one, two, Dum do 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 la do 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 again. So that's the A part of the tune twice around. On to the B part. 
F sharp roll do do la da do do la do 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 All right, so you might notice uh, that my voice actually warmed up a little bit as I went along, and I think that's because I was really starting to breathe more deeply. Another good reason to learn how something goes is to learn to sing it before you go to play it. Sort out the tune, learn the tune, and get your breathing going before you try it on your instruments. And fiddle players, you can breathe too. So there's the pigeon on the gate. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you next month at the Tune of the Month. <laughs>